Hello everyone, welcome to Connected. Today I am here again to introduce you a new guest and a new topic. Remind you that I speak to you all the way from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I don't want to start the show without thanking you for always watching and for always leaving your message and to the people that wrote me to my email, I will soon be able to uh, answer your questions but I am most over, I am ha I'm thankful to be able to connect with you on that level. I want to remind you that you don't only see me through the Abby Ayala channel but also through Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. topic celebrates determination, effort and passion. These are three qualities that I strongly believe that are very important in life in order to make you succeed not only on the professional way but also on the personal way. It doesn't matter how long you're gonna get, how young you are, how older you got, as long as you know what you want and keep yourself focused, you're going to get there. Today we meet Florencia Franceschetti. She is from Argentina but lives in Miami. She has a very impressive story and we are going to meet and see and try to learn from her or even trying to inspire ourselves a little bit. See how she was, how she dedicated her life and her actions in order to grow professionally in a different country, away from home. Don't go anywhere, stay connected. Welcome back to my beautiful audience. We are already connected with Flor, but before we are gonna get to know a little bit of her background. Florencia Franceschetti, aka Flor Frances, is an Argentinian journalist currently living in Miami. She was born in Buenos Aires in 1986 and graduated from Universidad Nacional de La Plata. She started her career in journalism working at Radio Universidad de La Plata. She first moved to Miami at 22 years old as part of a work and travel program to work as a server for the Marriott hotels. Soon after, she got an internship to work at the PR department of Sony Music Latin America. After that, she worked for an Argentine software development company as a community manager and marketing director. During that time, she started an online publication called Too Much Love magazine. In 2013, she went back to Miami to work as the head of marketing for a record label focused in electronic music. In 2016, she decided to open her own marketing and public relations agency with her partner, Sylvie Piccolotto. In 2017, she started a record label based in LA called Anti-Language Records with the Australian band Vow Wows. As a journalist, she has interviewed many international artists, including members of The Cure, Joy Division, Bauhaus, Yoko Ono, among others. She currently lives in Miami with her husband Joe and their dog Lemmy. It is my pleasure to introduce Florencia Francis Chetty, aka Flor Francis. Welcome to Connected Flor. It's a pleasure to have you here today. It's a pleasure for me. Thank you so much for for calling and yeah, I'm really excited to reconnect after all these years and to be a guest in your show. So Flor, what I, I always admired about you was uh, your drive and your passion for what you really like. So, which in this case it's music and it's always being able to uh, take the word right out, of, out to the world. So let's go back a little bit in order to understand. Before you graduate in Argentina and then you moved looking for, I don't know, different uh, opportunities 
or different lifestyle. I wonder, what made you leave Argentina? So, I loved Argentina. I had all my friends there, my family, but I always, like one of my main mottos is like, step out of your comfort zone, right? And I was doing great there, like I was working a lot, but then I felt that I needed something else, you know, that I was already in my comfort zone, so I wanted to step out. So for that reason, I decided to, oh, you can see my dog there, sorry. Hey, right there. He loves to be the center of attention, but sorry. That's great, uh, I love, I love animals. <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, uh, yes, I decided to, to come to Miami by, by myself and I left like my family and my friends all in Argentina, but I wanted to take the challenge of, you know, what to see what I could achieve in a city that I didn't know anybody, that I didn't really know the language. I mean, like I knew English before, like from before, but like not, you know, like that well so right. yeah i decided to take the challenge and um, prove myself what i could achieve by myself right and this is when we do this um, there are several different aspects that influences your lifestyle and there are also uh, different things that once uh, start to know about oneself so going back and forth from argentina and usa what would you say were the biggest challenges and what were the biggest rewards? So, biggest challenges... Immigration is always a challenge. You know, going through like the visas, the paperwork, like all the interviews that sometimes you feel that you're guilty of something that, but you're not, you know, so those things added pressure of course and always you know to uh to everything um right but um besides that uh professionally the challenge was to to be able to make the right contacts and to be able to uh make a living of what i wanted in a in a city that i didn't know that much at the moment so i had to work uh, as a server, I had to like walk a lot. I had to, you know, like uh, hustle in a way until I got uh, where I wanted to be, and I, until I was able to to make a living out of uh, out of music and out of uh, marketing and journalism. That that's uh, what I do. So that was the biggest challenge, but also the result was the biggest reward because now I finally. Uh, like I have a Reagan agency, the marketing agency and, and PR, we do artist development also. And then I have my magazine, Too Much Love, and I have a great team of people working uh, in, in all the projects. So I think that's the, the biggest reward. And Flor, all of this happened and how many years did all of this took? Since like my journey started, is gonna be ten years ago in December. Um, but basically, I mean, I had many. There were many different steps in the middle that I thought that that was what I wanted, and then now I'm like, oh no, this is what I want. But like, uh, my like the first thing that I achieved and I really loved was like when I got my my first internship here with uh, Sony Music, and that took six months since I was here till I got it. So that was the first time I was like, oh, this is what I wanted always to do. And they said, like, no, I'm an intern. I don't get paid. So I need to go, sense. I need to do something else, you know? <laughs> so then, uh, uh, yeah, then I started working for a record label here, uh, electronic music record label. And I was like, oh, that's what I want. And I was the head of marketing there. That took maybe four years, five years uh, since I've, I've gotten here. Um, but then finally, when I decided to, to open my, my own business was maybe, was two years and a half ago. Um, 
And that's when I finally was like, okay, I have control of, of my life and I can really do uh, what I want and I can work with the people that, uh, that I want and that I, uh, that I feel I will grow with. Right. So let's so, going on that path. I want you to tell us about the, your project, about the project Too Much Love. How was that? How did that start, and what is it at today? So, uh, Too Much Love started in 2013. Um, there was a period in between since I got here, since I got to Miami, uh, until now that like that I lived in Argentina for like two years and I was working uh, at a software uh, development company as a community manager. Mm -hmm. But that mm -hmm. didn't really involve music. So I needed a creative outlet related to music where I could like express myself and like a, a creative project because I felt that uh, that job, like I loved it and the team was awesome, but I needed something more creative to do in, in my free time. So I started the magazine. Um, the magazine started as a, the concept was to have interviews with different um, artists that were passionate about what, what they do um, and uh, all the articles were in both in English and Spanish. So when I moved back to Miami, uh, I kept on with the project and it eventually evolved into uh, more like a news source for alternative music. Um, so it, it doesn't only feature interviews, it also features like uh, music features, music reviews, um, and I also have a radio show now, and that it's every Thursday from six to seven on Jolt Radio. So now where it's at is, it's becoming, I think one of the, one of like a, a very relevant or very important alternative uh, source of music news, at least here in Miami. Um, and, and yeah, we have the radio show also, so that's where the project is at now. Uh, we had our first print edition um, like uh, a year ago, and we're gonna print the second one now. We're, we're trying to combine the online and, uh, and the print. And we also organize some, some events. So your the actually the your radio show it's also called titled Too Much Love. Yes, it is. Um, yes. Okay, and then tell us a little bit. How do you create your content? How does your uh, the process starts to decide the content and to contact people? How do you do that? So. Uh, too much love is not just me. I also have uh, writers that send me pitches or ideas for articles, and then I say like, "Oh yeah, this is this is good," or "I like this. I think it's relevant for the publication or not." So sometimes that's the way that I that we get the content. We have contributors. Um, then I'm also uh, subscribed to a bunch of like PR agencies that I know they work with musicians that I like. So then they send me the stories, uh, you know, when, when different musicians release new music or when they, uh, if they're available for interviews and then they will notify me and then like I will, I will uh, write the story or interview them. And then the third way of like finding stories is just things that, you know, if I'm like walking down the street and like I, I see something that I think will be relevant for the publication or maybe triggers an idea for a story uh, or you know like if I'm like surfing the web and like I see you know something that catches my eye uh, then I think if it will be good for a feature or if it will be good for an interview or what would be the best uh, format for that uh, content. Right, and then which kind of, um, which type of music do you are, do you incline for? Because, you know, Miami is known worldwide as being more kind of, a, I don't know, tropical place, very Latin. So what is the type of style of music that you, um, that you put on your content? So, 
I love uh, post punk, new wave, uh, metal. So mostly, uh, I work with that kind of music. I even have a Depeche Mode tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> and um, but um, that doesn't mean that if there is something good uh, and if it's from another, if it fits in another genre, that doesn't mean that I'm not gonna talk about it. Uh, but mostly, I I specialize in post punk, new wave, and metal. I see. Okay, I see. so going through that trend, let's move forward for the next one, which is uh, you have the anti language records. How did that project come to life? So I was working with uh, on a PR campaign for a very talented band called uh, Vows from okay. Australia. Um, first, they hired me uh, to work uh, as their PR person for, for a campaign and for a tour that they were doing. And we got along so well that uh, they decided to, they wanted to open, they been wanting to open a label for some time. Uh, so they were like, Floor, I think we, we work together really well. Um, why don't we open the record label together? And I was like, yeah, why not? You know, like I had worked in labels before. Uh, I have said that I didn't want to work in a label anymore because it, I didn't like the way that the bigger labels are structured. But uh, with this project that we, I was going to have, you know, like I was going to be able to manage the direction of the project with vows that they are my, that they are like my, my partners in these projects. So we decided to create a label that is by artists for artists. So um, we're like trying to get like an ex like experimenting with different new models, new models of contracts, new models of, uh, of releases, of doing the, the PR campaigns that in a way that it will be more benefit that it will benefit uh, the smaller artists as well um, right and the label is based in California where uh, where the guys from from Bows recent Matt are living now I see so you work the the label is uh, the record label is uh, based in California but you work with him from Miami is this correct? Yeah. Yes, it's correct, because nowadays you can and, do mm -hmm. many things online, you know, like distribution, right. the vinyl the vinyl plant is here in Miami, so I can go and supervise when vinyls are being uh, pressed, and yeah. And there is where my next question was kind of going, because I really like to uh, make uh, things more tangible. So we say, okay, you have a, a record, um, you have the anti-language record, but what does this really mean? What is the job there? How, what happens when you find a band or when you find a talent? How does that work? So um, basically, if there is a band that, uh, that we like, so far we have signed three artists and we're talking to a fourth one that might, that we might uh, start working with very soon but basically the way that it works is we look for bands that are really good that we think they fit the genre and the aesthetic that that we go for um, you know mostly like post-punk or uh, or rock hard rock we have a metal band called Bliss um, and so basically we look for the if we like the band and we trust in the music the production is good if they seem, if they are professionals, you know, the best players, um, then we will uh, talk to them, figure a strategy, a plan on how to release those new music, those new songs, how to release the videos, um, and if there is a tour. And actually, if you want to see something cool, I have here one of the the vinyls that we press. Oh, I see. I love that it's, that you work with vinyls because you know we don't see them a lot 
anymore. Um, Flor, let's do this. We're gonna go to a cut really fast. And I want you to, when we come back, to give us the names of the bands so people can, you know, go and check them out. Stay tuned, yeah. we'll be right back to a fast cut. People at home, stay connected. We'll be right back. Welcome back to my beautiful audience. For the people that is just landed to the show, today we are meeting Flor Francis. She's talking to us all the way from Miami and today we talk about how to be successful when you are abroad, when you decide to leave home. And she was telling us that her first step and her motor is to always get away from her comfort zone. Today, Flor Francis has a magazine, a music magazine. Also, she has a show on, on radio and she also owns anti-language records. She was telling us about, you guys have four bands signed with your uh, record label, correct? Yes, uh, we have um, vows that they are uh, also like they are the owners of the label, but like we work together since the beginning. Then we have um, Bliss, B L E E T H. Uh, they are from Miami, and they are uh, a sludge metal band. Really, really, really good. Um, so if you are into like the harder part of rock. Um, I'm sure you will you will enjoy it. Um, it's fronted by by Lauren Palma, that she's a good friend of mine, and she's an amazing graphic designer. Okay, really like her. Uh, and then um, we have released music by Spirit in the Room, uh, that it's a a rock uh, a rock band from from LA. And uh, we are in the talks with other bands, uh, but those three are the main ones that, that, I mean, they are the ones that are active at the moment. And yeah, I'm if gonna you wanna- I'm gonna have all of this information displayed on screen so people can, you know, uh, actually take some notes and go and check them out. Flor, let's move with your next project because this is another thing that I really admire and you is that you're always moving forward. And it's pretty clear that your area, where you like to be, you're a writer, you like music, and you're always trying to get the word out and make it better. So tell me about your current entrepreneurship, the Reagan Agency. What is that project about? So Reagan Agency is basically the project that is taking most of my, of my time at the moment, that I'm investing more time on it. Um, and it's a um, uh, marketing and artist development agency. Uh, we're based here in Miami, this is the office. And um, basically we um, offer different services uh, to uh, artists that want to promote their music. So we do uh, PR, that means that if they want to release a song or a video, we look for a premiere on a bigger publication, on, on a national publication. Uh, today, there was, uh, we had one release. We usually have releases on Friday because that's when like uh, all the, usually music is released. So today, uh, Brooklyn Funk Essentials uh, released a, a, new, a new video and it was premiered on uh, Rolling Stone France because the band is, uh, is going to be doing the air now. Uh, then uh, mm -hmm. we work with many artists from, uh, from the States, we have people, artists from France, and we have artists uh, from Mexico. There's a really good one that I want to recommend. His name is Latebox. He is from uh, Mexico, but he lives in Miami, and he makes beautiful electronic uh, music, a little bit like dream, like dreamy. Um, so uh, he's Latebox, L-E-I-T-V-O-X. Um, and then, we work with uh, Astari Nights, that they are uh, locals here from Miami, but really, really good boss punk band. Um, so yeah, we work with a lot of different artists, different genres, uh, and basically we help artists to jumpstart their careers or like to get them further uh, through uh, PR efforts or like assisting with tours. Uh, or assisting, helping them to find like a good, good graphic designer to design the cover of the album. Basically, we plan the strategies 
for releasing music. So basically, it's um, you kind of guide them to find the structure in order to succeed with their talent. Exactly. Yes. Um, seriously, you are an inspiration, and I am so thankful that you had you took the time to to tell us about your life and to share with us. I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes so you can say hi to the audience and also invite them to visit your uh, the magazine Too Much Love or your website. Go ahead and leave your information. Awesome. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me and thank you, thanks to everybody that watched this and that, uh, uh, that tuned in. And uh, yeah, so you can uh, find, uh, follow our magazine, too much love magazine .com, uh for daily news on alternative music. Uh, you can go to reaganagency.com and that's where we list the, all the bands that we work with and you can like click and like listen to the music and stuff. Uh, so that's reaganagency.com. And then uh, to know more about, um, Anti-Language Records, you can go to antilanguagerecords.com. Flor, thank you so much. Always be well. And until next time with me, goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye. After listening to Flor, I can advise you to always keep yourself driven. Doesn't matter how hard or how difficult things get. Doesn't matter how far you need to get from your, from your goals but just keep your goals alive. As Flor told us, it's never easy. Sometimes you have to work doing other things that you never imagined, but as long as you keep your mind focused and always surround yourself with the people that is going to feed your passion, that is gonna make everything possible. I'm gonna see you again in seven days. Remember, if you know somebody that is doing something great for the world or for themselves so they can be an inspiration for others, make sure to write me so I can interview them. My email address is conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I'll be glad to connect with you and to let the world know about your work. Have a great day and stay connected. Enjoy your week. Until next time.